Good morning everyone, welcome back to another video. It's a cold Monday start at the convent, but we've got a few important jobs to do today. The two remaining walls behind me must come down because today we're gonna to do something a little bit exciting. I want to mark out with some spray paint where the gallery is going to be so you can visualize what it's gonna look like. Also today, Tony is delivering two scaffolding towers, so we'll have to help him, and then we've got a few Deschetri runs, so let's start smashing down some walls. Simon, if you're not wearing high vis, you're not working. Go and put it on. Oh, I'm going home then. <laughs> and you, Dad. Go and put high vis on. I ain't got one. I'll go and get you one. Go on then. I'll go and get you both one. Good morning everybody, we're back at the convent today. As you can see, we've cleared the massive pile of rubble here, which was the old ceiling which we took down. Um, it's allowed us now to expose all the plasterboard wall that's behind us and this side here, up to I believe it's about here somewhere. So all that's got to come out uh, this afternoon. Well, I say this afternoon, this morning, it's still morning now. Bloody freezing out there as well. Uh, uh, the ceiling's got to come down with it. So what we, what, what we're going to do is, we're going to cut all the plasterboard out. Billy's bought some new saw blades for us. We're going to cut all the plasterboard out, put that to one side, and then we'll take all the metal down, which is the metal stud work that's there, ceiling down, we'll put all the metal to one side, plasterboard to one side. Um, also, there's another part of this wall here 
if Alex comes at me. This part of this wall here has all got to come down as well. Which behind that is the original wall, which is the, you know, the mud and straw uh, built construction. So that'll all come down as well. And then we'll put that out the other window, which has got the other chute, which goes to the garden. So that's our next job now. Um, it's certainly keeping us warm, all this moving, because it is, like I say, it's freezing out there today. I think it was about minus three this morning when we got here. So it's not too bad once you're working. So that's our next job for this afternoon. So let's crack on. So we're doing really well this morning. Um, we've got most of the wall down, plasterboard and all that, but there's something interesting going on here within the room. And we've got no idea what it is. So we're gonna expose it a bit more, see what this thing is because it's stone. I mean, it could have been a fireplace, but on the old photographs of the convent, there's no chimney here. Um, and there is like a, There's like a hollow bit behind it. Um, so yeah, we're gonna take this wall down, see what's behind it. Hopefully it's something interesting. So uh, let's crack on. Let's do it. Good afternoon. So if you notice behind these walls that we're taking down, I've insulated it all with uh, this insulation. Uh, so rather than throw it away, what I thought would be a good idea is I can reuse it at the farmhouse because it's quite expensive. So rather than just throw it away, you know, into the landfill, we're just repurposing it all. So, you know, it helps me out as uh, much as saving the planet a little bit, if you like. So. That's what we're going to do. We're going to take all this out and take it to the farmhouse. So now it's exposed, it's probably a lot clearer to see that it probably is most likely a chimney breast. But the fact that it steps out here on this floor means that it could have had a fireplace here at some point, 
or it's just a chimney breast for the fireplace in the refectory. Because if you think about the refectory, it's a huge room, about 120 square meters in size, and there's no heating source in that room. So how would they have kept warm in that room while they ate? Because it's, such a, it's the biggest room in the convent, apart from the chapel. And if they didn't heat it, how would they stay warm? So this most likely probably goes all the way down into the refectory. It might not. And maybe there used to be an old fireplace there that they've probably removed, but we don't know. But it's interesting nevertheless. And uh, yeah, there's no photographs of any chimneys on this part of the building. So maybe it was removed much earlier on. So yeah, very interesting. We'll just leave it here. And then we'll, when we come to doing the stud work and insulation, we'll just stud around it a little bit. Nothing we can really do about it. Let's continue. So this chimney breast, or supposed chimney breast, has had me thinking. Upstairs, above it, there is a room where we were with Duncan last week, I think it was, where we were removing the electrics. And that's next to the hidden room. And there's a bit of a funny layout up there. And I've been thinking about it. So I'm gonna have a quick look and see what it has to do with this chimney breast, because it's directly above it. And yeah, let's go and have a look, just so I can clear my mind a little bit. Forgot, I've got a head torch. There we go. So welcome to the room next to the hidden room. So, I know this layout of the building off by heart so well, that I knew that this is the wall between the door and this is where the chimney breast would be. But there's no chimney breast up here. There's a plank of wood and some terracotta Tomet tiles. But I think this, this bit of wood here has something to do with the chimney breast, or it might not even be a chimney breast. It could just be some weird void that was designed into the building. Maybe it had a different purpose in the past. We don't know, so I'm gonna get in here quickly. <clears throat> Because that's a solid wall, and now there's wood. Now there's wood behind it, which doesn't make any sense. So it could possibly be covering something. Yeah, that's hot, and you can hear that there's a void below it. I'll take up these tomets quickly, or bricks, whatever they may be, just to possibly get underneath this piece of wood. That is a thick piece of wood, much thicker than I thought it would be. And it's full of woodworm, which isn't surprising for this building. Okay. Okay. We're underneath it now almost. Aha! What is that? Okay, there's a big void. Oh, I can't see a thing. 
Okay, that's very interesting. That is quite a big void actually. And how far does that drop? That goes a long way. I didn't actually hear where it stopped. I heard it bouncing off the internal walls though. So if we get a saw quickly, cut through here, pull this piece of wood out, we can actually see down there and what's below. So let me go and get a saw quickly and we'll cut that. I have the saw everyone. Let's continue with this, some sort of discovery. Put the door there, ow my knee. There we go. Let's do it. Let's cut through it. That's a thick bit of wood. Okay, something happened. Oh, that's a really thick piece of wood. I'm trying to get that out, it's a nightmare. Wow, <laughs> that is thick. Oh my goodness me, what is that? I think we found the fireplace or the chimney breast. It's really wide. So the cavity is about probably a meter and a half, maybe, that way, but only about that thick. And the more I look, it looks like it only goes down to the floor below. So I've taken out a bit more wood and it, you can see down there, it goes Probably only to the floor below, not all the way to the ground floor. I'm not sure exactly how deep that is. Um, but come and have a look, Alex. I'll move out the way. So you can see down there, everyone. And also, it's definitely a chimney breast, but at the bottom, you can see some Tomet tiles. So somebody at some point has thrown them down there. So I'm just gonna cover this back up now, everyone. It's really interesting, but it's not safe. Somebody could fall down here. Even an animal could fall down here. So yeah, we'll cover that up and then we'll go downstairs and continue what we're doing. I don't think it goes any further than that. But we might be surprised when we start doing the stripping out of the refectory. So yeah, put some wood over this. Oh, it's a bit sketchy. Another bit of wood there. That'll do. Okay. Hmm. No one's going to walk in there and it's safe enough. So, yeah. Put that stuff all there. Let's go. Ooh. Cheers, mate. So, we're currently down in the refectory and I'm not sure how deep the chimney breast goes. It could go to this floor, which means that there used to be a fireplace between that door and that window in this room, which makes sense because how did they heat this huge room? But we're gonna talk about that a little bit later because the scaffolding has arrived. Tony's here, so let's go and unload it.
the fourth scaffolding tower has finally arrived and this is going to enable us to actually do a really good job on the ceiling because before we only had one tower but now we've got four we've got three times the amount of space that we can work off and this tower is absolutely amazing. So ta scaffoldingtowersfrance.com. I'll put a link in the description. They're UTS. They're probably one of the best scaffolding towers you can get. And they are definitely the cheapest. So if you're doing any renovation in France and you need to access the wall or the roof, anything like that, this is the place to order your scaffolding from. So I'll put a link in the description. Go and check them out. They're absolutely amazing. So let's go and crack on. The Shettery trips are done. So Simon and I are now here alone because Dad and Yanis have gone to do the last load at the dump and then they're going home. But we've got an important job to do. Like I promised this morning, I want to just do um, an example of how the gallery will sit on this floor and where it will be. So I've got some spray paint. I did have a tape measure, but Simon said we'll use this pole instead because it's exactly one meter 80, um, which is actually a better idea, I think. Yeah. So we're gonna go round. There's one dot there. And it means we can just do a straight line after that, can't we? Yeah, perfect. Yeah, into the wall. Beautiful. Good job, Simon. And then we've got to come out from this. Are the... we coming out from here yeah, or the back? Out from there, that's it. Oh, it's almost spot on. So this is just a rough measurement, just so you can see where the gallery is going to go on the floor plan. We'll do a few here. There we go. There. Yeah, that looks about right. Yeah, looking quite good actually. This one's a bit tricky because the wall's there. Um, maybe do that one first, just up to that corner. That's it, just to that corner. And I can mark it off here. And now we mark it off that wall yeah. there. Yeah. Approximately. Something yeah. like that. Wow. Something like that. Now, if we go all the way around, you've got paint on your hands, mate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> right, if I go all the way around now, you're only good at this, Simon. I've never done this before. This is what sort of ground layers do, isn't it? Yeah, well, they've got a normal one to start down. Dad's done this all his life, he has. He'd be perfect at this. You just, you just, you walk in a straight line, like that, basically. Look at that, he's a pro. Straight over the extension lead. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, that's not meant to exist anymore. So if you don't, you're just falling down there, Simon. <laughs> oh, sorry. Oh, Simon's dead. <laughs> what a shame. Oh well, let's carry on. Um, so this is where the gallery is going to be. I don't know if we're going to have it one meter eighty from the wall out. 
Don't forget there's going to be some stud work, but probably only about 100 mil, 10 centimeters, something like that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we could make the gallery slightly smaller, but what I don't want is the gallery to be too small when you're just walking along. It's got to be bearing quite substantial, mind, hasn't it? Bearing in mind you're going to have bookcases. Yeah, there will be some bookcases, so, but they're only, yeah. bookcases are only thin. Yeah. So you so, have a stub wall and a bookcase. Yeah, we're probably losing about 50 or 40 centimetres yeah. because of the bookcases, which might, which might make it seem smaller, this room, because at the moment it looks huge and the gallery looks... Well, it's called an atrium, isn't it? Like a gallery and you better see straight down. And there'll be beautiful balustrading and the design, I think, will be the same as the staircase, the other end, the original staircase. Yeah. So we'll try and replicate that. So yeah, I actually really like that design. Um, let's go into some structural details quickly. So, you ready, Alex? I'm ready. There will be an RSJ going through there, so wall to wall. There'll be another RSJ going here, wall to wall, and they'll be bedded in the wall. So they'll be structural. They'll, in fact, they'll tie the building together. And then between that, there'll be another RSJ and they'll be welded to each other. And then this side, that'll also go into the wall. So that'll tie the exterior wall and then into that wall. And then the same again here. So there'll be another RSJ between, welded, and then it will tie into that wall, to that wall. So essentially the design's like a hashtag, that makes any sense. Yeah. And that will be considerably stronger than what currently exists. So it's a great design. I'll have to find a really good competent fabricator. Obviously order the stills in at some point when we're ready for that. Oh, I'm currently dead. There we go, I'm alive again. Yep, so that's not gonna exist. Shocking, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, and then obviously you're gonna have the beautiful new oak beam. So Paddy the carpenter did actually come in today and he's gonna to go to the wood yard and he's gonna put in the order for me. So that's good. Um, he said it would be expensive, which is a shame, but it's got to be done. And then we're probably also going to replace all of these joists because they're all bowed. We can't use them. We can't have bowed. We can't have a brand new oak beam and use the old joist if they're all bowed. So that means we've got to change the whole lot. But um, it will be amazing. It'll be beautiful. It'll be fresh. And what Simon and I talked about the other evening was we need to get the ceiling 99% finished before we dismantle, well, take out the floor below because it's gonna be quite difficult to access the ceiling unless we use the scaffolding. And it would be easier if we've got the ceiling tidy, at least 90% done. Yeah, and then drop this And out. then drop the floor so we haven't got to revisit it you know, at a later stage. So yeah, very interesting. So that's it for us. We'll see you all tomorrow, everyone. Um, Dad's not going to be here for the rest of the week. He's off to England. So it's just you, Me, you and Yanis. And Yanis, yeah. Obviously, lovely cameraman, Alex. Beautiful cameraman, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks for watching, everyone. And we'll see you all tomorrow.